Hello, this is the DIY Magician, and we're on the journey to see how to be funny. And I'm here with... Steve Hart. Thank you very much, Steve, for, for being here today, and, and, and it's going to be a fun journey. We're, we're gonna, um, I'm going to ask you a few questions, and they'll get harder as they go. Okay. Uh, to start off with, I want to ask, who was your comedy inspiration? Ooh, so many. That's the, that's, the, that's the. I go to the old style. I was influenced by Red Skelton, Sid Caesar, Milton Berle. You know the old style. I used to love Johnny Carson. Um, but then again, I had my own childhood idols, uh, which are not famous. I mean, they were lo famous locally, so they were influenced. And oddly enough, I became friends with them when I got older. It was just, it's ironic how what happened. You know. Now, do you uh, can you mention uh, some of their names? Well, uh, Bev Bergeron. If you know who Bev Bergeron. I worked for Mark Wilson, I, and then a guy named uh, Harlow Hickelooper, whose real name was Hal Fryer. He he had a TV show, did the Three Stooges thing at Indianapolis Market, and I became friends with Hal. And it was, and I actually got to be on his his TV show later in later years, which after I became a professional magician. <laughs> well, that's I, I think that's exciting because um, meeting your childhood heroes is is a good thing. Um, you, you, and you never think that's going to happen. And, and uh, he came to me. It was weird. He saw me do a show and wanted to bring his grandson to see my show and came up when I looked up I said oh my god it's Harley Cooper <laughs> the kid my kid my he entertained me and I told him I said you got to go back on TV because all the kids that you entertained when I was young are adults and they want their kids to see you so he went back as Grandpa Harlow on the, the local uh, 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 Fox uh, network at the time for six more years. And that's when he had me on the show. So yeah, you, you, whoever is your influence, that's the, well, the one thing I want to encourage people to do. Whoever you influence is your comedy. Don't be afraid to contact them. Don't be afraid to say, let them know that you, that they were the influence. Even like Dick Van Dyke, I contacted him. And you know, the people will, will respond to you. Not always, but at least make the attempt, you know. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Dick Van Dyke because I, I've I've done the same thing. I, I had a friend who um, I wanted to uh, do something special for, and I had a, a I sent a postcard to Dick Van Dyke, yeah. and he autographed it, threw it in the mail, and and surprised my friend. So yes, Dick That's Van Dyke exactly is the I'm man. So yes, and you uh, never know. You just never know the opportunities will come to you. You know. So yeah. Awesome, and and I uh, thank you for that. And and um, now the questions, like I said, are going to get a bit harder. Um, the next question is, uh, what was the? Um uh, or, I'm sorry. What do you think is funny? What do, what what's funny to you? Well, that's that's the challenge. What I think is funny is not always funny to somebody else. I I sometimes have to curb my humor, and uh, what comes and in, pops into my mind. But I what I've one thing I've done is I developed a character or a boundary, uh, my persona that when I'm on stage. So I do this, but I don't do this. I may think something's funny when I watch another entertainer, but I go, but it's not going to fit. That stuff's not going to fit my comedy. So what I think's funny, I mean I. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm, I grew up on slapstick, you know, Three Stooges and that kind of stuff. So it's, but I don't do that kind of comedy in, in my show. Uh, I use a little bit more intellectual comedy. Uh, and, 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 and sometimes your comedy can be for the intellectual, and sometimes it can be for the people who are not intellectual, who are just wanting something fun. Uh, what is funny? Hmm. I, that, you know, it's a, it's a tough question. I'm sure. I'm sure. You, I'm not the first one who said how to uh, answer that. But I've had discussions with people. You know, what's funny to one person not funny to another. So, uh, but I, I pretty much described what I do. But I I don't do slapstick, even though I do like it. You know, you'd be tempted to, but you, do, you just don't, right? Right. Yeah. Well, first thing, I'm, I'm a big guy. I'm six foot seven. So you know, I'm not the guy that I'm the one that takes the fire. You know, right. you kind of like Curly or something. Yeah, I'm yeah. The guy that takes the blunt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you uh, I guess the closest thing is to hire somebody to do it to you but then that would be I, I had it for a while I had a friend who was a clown and uh, he was always playing the tricks on me yeah that's how it went. that's neat I like that um, that that's um, uh, I guess it's uh, for a one-man band type thing it doesn't work but that's I like that, that idea you just have to work with your audience you have to know like I say you have to set them up and they and then let, let the comedy fall on you you know if you're the big guy now it depends on your personality it really does you know a guy like you get by with something i couldn't get by with well no i i'm i'm the the medium guy but i'm i'm in the same same thing i think we have a kind of a same okay. structure that, that i your personality too yeah well, um, we're, again, we're uh, moving on on this. Um, I'm going to ask you uh, to uh, go back in your, your experience and see if there was a, a funny moment that happened that was unscripted uh, during one of your performances. Constantly. First thing is that you, you allow for that to happen. 
That's the secret. When you become a professional entertainer, you actually open yourself up and let the audience feel as though that they can actually interject and become a part of the show. Now, I had my training for three years as a street performer, so therefore the audience took you know, liberty to do a lot of things with me. You know. Uh, but later on, when I worked uh, in a lounge show, um, like a comedy club, the audience was close enough to me so they, you know, they could interact. And I picked up a lot of the lines I use in my show. I got from the audience. They gave the, they gave me the lines. And you just keep using them, and that's good. Oh yeah, yeah. You definitely, definitely keep using them. But um, <clears throat> there, there have been numerous times when funny things would happen. Is that what you want to know? Like, you know, I mean, I never. One special thing. Like, you know, I'm famous for the burnt shoe trick, where you borrow a kid's tennis shoe and you put it in the and burn it up accidentally, supposedly. And I remember a little girl once, she she got mad. She goes, my dad's going to sue you. <laughs> and the audience has roared. If I could get him to say that every time, that'd be hilarious. Uh, so, you, yeah, you, you never know. The main thing is to open up the opportunity. So I have numerous situations where funny things happen, but uh, can't tell them all. Yeah, I wish you could, but no. <laughs> now, let me ask you, um, what makes you funny? Your heart. And you open up your heart, and 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 you got, you have to love yourself first, and you love other people. And love uh, opens up the humor and the comedy because it brings balance in all the 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 frustration and anger that we see in the world today. So you have to bring balance into it. See, so um, the question is, how? What brings me? What makes you personally funny? What makes me personally funny? Well, the fact that I I'm able to see the world that way, and so. And then I, I, I well, here, I mean, this is the truth. I used to do a dove act, you know, with the tails and the canes and the flowers and all stuff. It was a serious act. And the more I did it, people were laughing at me. And I thought, why are they laughing? And I videotaped it. We're talking about years ago. And they had videotape. And, yeah. and, and I watched it. I'm going, I am being funny. So I stopped doing the serious stuff and started doing more comedy. And boom, my career took off. I, I didn't realize that I had that sense of humor about me. So, yeah, I've been a comedy magician ever since then. Even before, it sounds like you were a comedy. I was. It took me a while to figure it out. And then when I perform, I don't wear these glasses. I wear I wear these glasses. This is what this is what I wear when I perform, and I wear a, a loud tie. And uh, so this, I'm known as for my no hair. I, I decided to cut my hair short, and then uh, of course I lost a lot of it. And then uh, wear these frames. And then these, yeah, there are no lenses oh, in these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, but and sometimes. I'll do that. I go. I know. I had something in my eye. You know. Uh, so that that I, you have to put on the persona. So it is a persona they take on, but it's an extension of the real me. Mm -hmm. Just amplified. Just amplified, yeah, right? Yeah. It is really me, but but it is it is it's beyond the normal me. You know. Um, so that, that's that's one thing I do. And, you know, and, then, and then I, you know, I have the clown nose, and then I act, look at this. And now this is a Tom Mullica idea. I don't know if you know this. You ever seen this? But that's on my driver's license. I actually have. Oh, you got it uh, print, printed on. Oh, on my driver's license. Yeah. And when I get pulled over, I put it on. <laughs> I've never gotten a ticket. They don't laugh at you, but I've got a ticket yet. But mostly airport people and ba people at security banks or whatever, they, they they get the big laugh out of it. You know, so that's that. I mean, that's that's special touches, and I like that. Yeah, it fits me. <laughs> it may not fit everybody. So. Well, now here I save the the toughest one for last. Uh, this is the one that um, I think it takes the most thought. What does it take to be funny? Well, I kind of touched on that a while ago, and that was the fact that you come from the place of the heart. Uh, if you try to, if you, if, if it's all intellectual, it's, 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 it has a dryness or uh, um, it's not, it doesn't come off to be real, um, or it's pr too predictable. Sometimes those, those are the things that happen. So you, you kind of come from the heart, and you kind of open yourself up because humor is out here in the universe. It's, it's, it's a part of the universe. So what well, you have to do is just open yourself so it can download into you. That's the way I look at it. So it's really, it happens sometimes in, in the moment. Uh, you never know. And, and, and I'm not really big at improv. I'm not a very good improv type of person. But I do it. I do improv in my show in, in the sense of fact that I have routines. I have lines and things I know I'm going to be using in my show. But I'm always allowing the opportunity for something unique to come and, and happen with me. 
I, I, um, it sounds like it's preparation, and then once you're once you're prepared, then you you have the opportunity yes. to flow with it's other things. It's a mindset, and then uh, so that's all I can say. I mean, uh, first thing, everybody's funny. I don't care who you are. You in, in one way you're funny. So if you feel like you're not funny, you you don't know yourself very well. And I'm encouraging people to open up. So you have to find what your funny is and identify with that and experiment with it. You know, give it time. Thank you very much, Steve. I appreciate your uh, your time, and uh, I, I, th this is a, uh, it's going to be a fun journey, and I, I'm I'm glad you were uh, able to come with us on it. So, again, oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, this again, this uh, DIY magician uh, on the road to see how to be funny. Until next time. If you enjoyed that video, join the Learn to Entertain YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the DIY Magician, join the DIY Magician Facebook group or artist page. And if you are a professional entertainer, you may want to join the DIY Magic Facebook group. Thank you again and enjoy.